Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. I pray this finds you well and blessed. In today's video, you're going to be looking around my hometown, Uskadar on the Anatolian, that is to say the Asian side of Istanbul, or as we call it on the side of the Bosphorus, the real Istanbul. Welcome to the culture, the sounds and the history. I just have so many favorite places here. And you know what I really love about Uskadar today? is that it's built on this great history of stones and face, but it's still a vibrant center today. And the area I'm gonna walk with you right now, it's been an intellectual hub, shall we say, for men speaking right into the night with their gulwas, cigarettes, and their Turkish coffee, right from the 1700s to now. And of course, it's all backed up by this incredible, well, guess what, a mosque. You know, something I've learned is that cats and dogs to a degree live better outside. I'd never really got that being an English person. We're so obsessed with having them in our lives. But when I see the cats here, they have their own kind of community. They have their own jazzy stuff going on and they run things here. Look how cute they are. And it's, by the way, it's not just women who feed them, it's the men too. So the interesting question is, how did Uskadar and this side of the uh, capital, Constantinople, become so homogenized and Turkic? Well, that's because when the Beylik separated and pushed up towards Constantinople, the Turks settled here amongst the Greeks, the Armenians and some Jewish communities as well had already lived here. But the feel of Constantinople on the European side is a bit of a pull to people who are of other faiths. So naturally, the Turks crowded here and they love to build their Sufi tekkas, and that feeling remains today. It's so typical of an Ottoman design and the ideal for a mosque in general for Muslims that they include places to drowse. So often you'll see uh, men in between their working shifts sleeping on these benches. You'll see sisters taking a break and having their lunches together. And amongst the animals and the birds, well, it's a real congregation of worshippers. Very relaxed setting and beautiful. It's getting hot here in Istanbul. And the tradition is that you could go to most mosques and they will have a whack for a fund where you can actually have your water given to you. SubhanAllah, that's the Su Sabili there. And you can see it actually working. But who gets the Adja? That's the question. Who gets the Adja? So this particular fountain rerouted so they can give it out over there now. It was in memory of Mehmed IV's mother called Walida Sultan, subhanAllah. So this idea of giving out water is such an Islamic principle. It comes with the idea of the Rahmah from the sky from Allah Ta'ala is free for all humanity. It's free for the birds and the animals and the soil and the plants. And of course, the human beings should share it because it's a human resource. And that carries on today. I love these traditions that are still living. Something else I love about Uskadar, but actually Turkey generally, is that the water fountains are just a part of life. They're literally everywhere. You stop noticing them after a while. In fact, there's a huge fountain over there. I didn't notice for six months. Look, you've got your shopping center there and you're just walking past and if you're a bit hot and you splash water on your face and it's all drinkable. Allahu Akbar. Honestly, that's, that's caring for people. From the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, this idea that water is a nyama, a blessing from Allah, that we must share and that we get blessings from it if we do share, well, that's continued all over the Ottoman Empire. Here you can see, right in the heart of Uskadar, you get off the ferry. First thing you see is where you can get some water. So just think of this, as soon as you get off that ferry, that boat or the train, the first thing people would have wanted was where do I get some water? You didn't have to shop to buy it. You didn't have to buy it in plastic. It tastes pretty good. You can just go right here. And if you look at the design, it's really interesting because Turkey gets pretty hot, right? I can tell you it does. And this I reckon can shade, what do you think? 30, 40 people underneath it, mashallah. Free water sources, Ottomans. This was built in 1728 in memory of Emmetullah Rabia Sultan, that's the mother of Ahmed III. You know, I always think when these things are dedicated to women that it just shows this isn't a faith of misogyny, it's a faith of 
loving the mother, if anything. The royals in Europe didn't love their parents, right? But I think what Islam gives us, subhanAllah, is that we have a way of showing our love even when they've left us. So you can build a water well or a fountain or you can feed the poor, set up a wax. We have things that still serve them and I think I, have, I feel really blessed that we have that as a community, subhanAllah. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, sandwich. Sandwich. Okay. One. Fifth. Thank you. Hmm, my Gordon Ramsay review is three times the price and uh, not bad when you eat it, but what do you expect from a port, right? Still, I'm going to eat all of this. I'm hungry. Hmm, alhamdulillah. Uskadar traditionally was the point for Ottoman hajis to set sail to Damascus en route to Mecca and Medina, subhanAllah. This would have been, if you can imagine it, a scene of great color, excitement, drumming, horses coming, a parade, people cheering and saying, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And the sultans traditionally as well gave special gifts for the governors of Mecca and Medina. And these would cover the expenses of those uh, projects that they had there, subhanAllah, and they'd go with the hajis as well. And what a beautiful scene to imagine. If you've been following me on social media, you know that I've had some interactions with the local birds. <laughs> I've had some seagulls nesting right on my balcony and we came to a kind of agreement. And you have to come to an agreement with the birds here in Uskadar. I don't know if you can pick that up, but there are dozens and dozens of birds here right now, mostly seagulls, but there are over 30 types of seabirds that specialize in getting the fish and the human waste of this area as well. So here is another mosque by the great architect Mimar Sinan. The narrative goes that the legendary architect didn't want to harm birds whilst making the mosque, but did want to keep them away from the worshippers and the beautiful stone. So he found with his engineering genius the precise spot on the Bosphorus where the two winds met and made it impossible because of the air currents for birds to fly over. And to this day, the mosque is known locally as Birds Can't Perch Mosque. So this is going to make you laugh, okay? Or don't laugh at me, all right? Don't judge me. Of all the beautiful mosques here, <laughs> This is actually my favorite mosque to pray in as a woman, right? So the big one over there, you, you have to go upstairs and it's so winding that I end up kind of flumped and crawling on my hands and knees, which is always embarrassing. And then the Mehramar Sultan, which is beautiful, but you always pray outside. So it's a bit like, you know, alhamdulillah, you could be in your own garden. But this one, you actually get to go in and feel, I don't know, it's a bit Ottoman-y inside. So what do I love about living in Uskadar today? Okay, it's easy to say everything, but I love the fact that those Islamic traditions, that heartfelt goodness of people still exists here. So, so when you get to know the shopkeepers, um, they will let you off five liras or, you know, little bits and pieces, but it's the Sufi traditions that carry on, the Islamic traditions. Let's listen. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Mashallah, these look nice. Pancakes. Yum. Yasi Kadeyev. Yasi Kadeyev. Okay, mashallah. Well, these are my fish, guys. At the end of the day, Salam alaikum, Abe. Nice to see you. Salam, salam. Tomorrow, inshallah. Take care. Thank you. Oh, I need to get some sweets. I need to get some sweets to give out to the kids at Eid, right? I guess this is where you get them. Salam alaikum. What I find really special about this area is that that memory of Islamic adab 
remains today. There were stories, for example, not long ago, of the shopkeepers in Uskadar. They would look away when the person opened their wallet in case they didn't have much money, in other words, not to embarrass them. And they would also, when they bought things to people of Uskadar, they would do great lengths in order not to show them to people so that the poor wouldn't have to see food that they weren't party to. Yeah, it's the opposite of posting things on Instagram. In all, I think it's just a mirror of the Islamic values that were put down in this place by our forebears. It's easy to live here, there's kindness here, and it's just not as busy as the rest of the world. Alhamdulillah, come to Uskadar, come and visit history, modernity. It's a good place to live, and may the Muslims be blessed wherever we live to bring goodness. Ameen. I hope you like this episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, and I read all of your comments, so keep them coming, especially places you'd like me to visit and see. Salam alaikum.